Hey guys, I'm Timo Parker. Welcome back to my channel. I'm a vocal coach and I'm here to help you to improve your singing voice. Today I want to talk about the difference between head voice and chest voice and also explain to you what my 60-40 rule means. I will also include some sound examples at the end of this video, so make sure to stick around. So let's dive right into it. So different people mean different things when they talk about chest voice and head voice. Most of the times people use the terms to tell you where they feel the most vibration. For example, most people tell you head voice has more vibration in the head, that's why it's called head voice, and in chest voice you have a dominant resonance room in your chest. And that might be true, but for me that's a bit too unspecific and that's why I want to explain the differences on a muscular base. So let's take a look on what is actually happening in your throat when you sing in different adjustments, head voice or chest voice. So I've been referring to the CT muscle on this channel already quite a bit. If you've missed it, make sure to check out what the CT muscle does. But basically, when we are singing, this muscle stretches the vocal cords to the right degree so we can sing high notes. And when this muscle is active and actually stretches the vocal cords, the vocal cords themselves are passive. So they are not contracting, they just get stretched. When we use this muscle combination, I call that head voice. And head voice is your full range from the lowest note to the highest note. That might be a bit confusing to hear because a lot of people refer to head voice to a higher sounding voice, but head voice can actually be also in your lower register. And I will show you how that sounds in the example at the end. And with our head voice, we can also create all kinds of different sounds. So sometimes chest voice is not even needed because depending on how wide our thyroid cartilage is, another video you can check out. Also on how low our thyroid cartilage is positioned or high, that also influences the sound. But we're gonna save those small adjustments for a different video where I show you different types of head voices. And all those different ingredients that we can play around with, we can also change them, adjust them in chest voice. But the main difference between head and chest voice is actually that in chest voice, the vocal cords themselves contract. That means, to put it in a very simple way, when you sing in head voice, the vocal cords are passive, and when you sing in chest voice, the vocal cords are active. And because of the contraction in your chest voice, the sound gets sharper and also increases in volume, because we have more tension on the vocal cords. So head voice actually uses less muscle groups to produce a sound, whereas Chest voice uses one muscle group more, at least, which is the contraction of the vocal cord. But even if we are singing in chest voice, our CT muscle should be still the muscle that pulls our vocal cord into the right position for high notes, for example. But this is the point where it can get quite tricky if you don't train your head voice. Because if you sing in chest voice and your CT muscle is overpowered by the contraction of your vocal cords, your vocal cords won't be able to stretch into the right position anymore. To give you a visual example, if this is my vocal cord and this is the CT muscle, we have the following situation in head voice. That means we sing and the CT muscle puts the vocal cord into the right position. So we sing this high note, for example, and the vocal cord itself is actually passive. It doesn't do anything. Whereas when we sing in chest voice, the CT muscle wants to stretch the vocal cord and at the same time the vocal cords want to contract and want to yeah, come together to make this contraction. The problem is if this contraction of the vocal cord gets so strong, the CT muscle won't be able anymore to stretch it all the way to the right pitch. And this is when we lose range and we have to use props like air pressure and falsetto, which we actually shouldn't use. Check out this video if you missed it. And this is where we run into problems. And this is where the 60-40 rule comes in. In my opinion, you should always try to train your head voice a little more than your chest voice. That means 60% of your exercises should be head voice and 40% should be chest voice. Just to make sure that the CT muscle is the dominant muscle in your system and you don't have problems to create high notes. It is actually very beneficial in the very beginning when you start out to just focus on your head voice and increasingly you can bring up the percentage of your chest voice once you start incorporating this sound into your practice. So it would be very helpful for you to know which sound you dominantly use in your repertoire so you can counterbalance the sound that you use in your repertoire and also train the other sound. Because just using head voice is probably better than just using chest voice, but we want to have a balance of the two. So if you're singing mainly in chest voice, make sure that you train 
a lot your head voice in exercises or with songs that require a head voice sound and don't neglect the sound. It is super important that the CT muscles stays dominant in your system and the contraction of the vocal cords don't take over. Now I wanna show you some examples on how head voice sounds versus how chest voice sounds in a lower register, mid register and a bit of a higher register just to get an idea how the sound changes when the vocal cords start contracting. That means chest voice or when they are passive, meaning head voice. So let's check it out. Uh, I forgot to record here. Ah, uh, what? Okay. There we are, second take, forgot to record. Luckily I realized it halfway. So once again, the chain I'm recording with, I'm using a Peluso P414 microphone going into an Apollo Twin. Yes, into my door. No compression, no equalizing, nothing, just the dry signal. So for the example in the low register, I chose a key where I'm actually not able in my chest voice at least to hit the last two notes, but in the head voice I am, just to show you that head voice is really the whole range, that meaning also the lowest note, and in chest voice, well, there are two missing. Let's go. <laughs> Moving to the mid register. Also realize in both adjustments, head voice or chest voice, I don't have a breaking point. I'm talking about this in the first video, I believe, and also in a different one, I'm gonna put them down in the description box below. So even though I'm incorporating a different muscle group in chest voice, I still don't have a break because I always use the full length of my vocal cords. So let's go into a higher example. I'm gonna put the gain a tiny bit lower cause yeah, it's gonna get a bit louder so I don't wanna clip off the microphone. Let's make sure it's not clipping. I'm going to slightly adjust the levels in case they are very uneven because I know the chest voice is going to be a tiny bit louder. All right, those were the examples. I hope it helped you to differentiate between head and chest voice. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And also, if you've made it so far into this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. I have more voice training content planned on this channel. So thank you so much for watching, guys, and I see you in the next video. Bye-bye.